follow your passion first. First, 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 first. Um, when I retired from the game, you know, I said they're asking kind of all the wrong questions. You know, what's the biggest industry I can get into? And it's all the wrong stuff. And you got to sit there and ask yourself, okay, what am I truly passionate about? What do I enjoy doing? And when you feel that way, I, honestly, I mean, you feel like you have never worked a day in your life. It's the most fun thing in the world. You get up in the morning excited about what you're doing. And you got to be really honest with yourself about it. If you wake up in the morning and you're dreading going to work, dude, do something else. <laughs> do something else. And those are hard decisions to make. But when you make those decisions, it's a very liberating experience. And you find out that the rewards will come. You'd be surprised, like some people, like my kids at two could do a lot of things. Right? At two, I could dribble a basketball, I could shoot a basketball on the Nerf hoop at the house, and I would go to practice with my father, I would observe my father, um, I'd sit and watch games with him. Well, I mean, you know, the passion came from the love for the game. You know, I, I loved everything about it, like the smell of the ball, you know, the smell of like brand new sneakers, and like the sound the ball makes when it hits the ground ball going through the net like all those things I, I love and so the passion comes from that because once you have that love you just want to be a part of this thing all the time I was born and I was born to play basketball you know what I mean and I played a lot of different sports um, but nothing brought me the sense of of, of peace and of uh, escape you know that the game of basketball did that sports yeah. has for life. I mean, you know, sports is the greatest, greatest metaphor we have in terms of dealing with life. Because, you know, even if you listen to music, music will give you guidance, mm -hmm. right? That you can then meditate on and think about how you would apply it. In sports, you have to apply it in the here and now. I mean, you're faced with challenges moment to moment. You're faced with pressures and anxiety and communication or the lack thereof and all sort of stuff. Like, it's in the moment. So you have to live it. And when you practice those things, you become better at it. But I just feel like in this day and age, our children have become less imaginative about how to problem solve. And parents and coaches have become more directive in trying to mandate or give orders or teach kids how to think and teach kids how to behave versus and tell them how to behave versus teaching them how to behave. You know, basketball for me was the most important thing. So everything I saw, whether it was TV shows, whether it was books I read, people I talked to, everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything, everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. You know, I grew up, growing up in Italy, um, when I first moved over there, it was, you know, I didn't speak Italian, I didn't have any friends. You know, I had the game of basketball and through sport and playing soccer, I was able to make friends and build connections. But it was a lot of time spent alone. And, and when I came back to the States, I wasn't the most athletic kid. You know, I was really scrawny, like really, really skinny and had like major knee issues because I was growing. So I was the <laughs> dorky kid with high socks and big old knee pads. I had to look long term. I had to look at it from a long term because I wasn't going to give up on the game. Right. So I had to say, okay, this year, I'm going to get better at that. Mm -hmm. Next year, this, and then so forth and so on. And then patiently, I was able to catch them. It's, it's just piece by piece, and it's the consistency of the work, which mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of parents you know, are missing today because we're not teaching that to our kids. We tend to say, like, kids don't want to do the work, but in reality, it's us. I mean, we're failing them because we're not leading them the right way and teaching them yeah. you know, how to fish, you know what I mean? And so, like, the consistency of work, Monday, get better. Tuesday, get better. Wednesday, get better, right? And you do that over a period of time, you know, not like one month or two months. I mean, it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, and then you, you, know, you can get to where you want to go. If your job is to try to be the best basketball player you can be, mm -hmm. right? To do that, you have to practice, you have to train, right? You want to train as much as you can, as often as you can. So if you get up at 10 in the morning, train at 11, right? 12, say 12, train at 12, train for two hours, 12 to two. Um, you have to let your body recover. So you eat, recover, whatever. You get back out, you train, start training again at six. Train from six to eight, right? And now you go home, you shower, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you wake up, you do it again, right? Those are two sessions, right? Now imagine you wake up at three, you train at four. You go four to six, come home, 
breakfast, relax, so so. Blah, blah, blah. Now you're back at it again, nine to eleven, right? You relax, and now all of a sudden you're back at it again, two to four, and now you're back at it again, you know, seven to nine. Look how much more training I have done by simply starting at four, right? And so now you do that, and as the years go on, the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger and by year five or six doesn't matter how, what kind of work they do in the summer they're never going to catch up because they're five years behind <laughs> right so it makes sense to get up and start your day early because you can get more work in. i expected to win you know like i expected us to win championships i expected us to win five quite honestly i expected us to win eight um and so when you have that vision in sports, it's a direct competition. Like, I know how hard they're working. I know how hard we're working. I know what their strategy is. I know what ours is, it, you know. So it's a little different. So when we went in the NBA, it was like, yeah, we expected to do that. But now we, we're going to come back and we're going to do it again, you know. And so it's that constant, like, all right, you're churning. You win one championship. I'm back in the gym the next day working, getting ready for the next one. Now... Uh, it's different because it's not about the awards. You know, you just wind up trying to create something that's that's going to inspire uh, someone mm. that hopefully, you know, through that inspiration, they can inspire somebody else. And what I've come to learn as my career went on is that's more significant than any championship is how do you connect with somebody that can then connect with another? Mm. And then with whether the awards come or not, you know, that's for, you know, the Academy, Academy. Award. <laughs> body to decide yeah. but you know like for us it's just to try to create things you know the mamba mentality simply means trying to be the best version of yourself that's what the mentality means it means every day you know, you're trying to become better and it's a constant quest it's an infinite quest so starting at the age of two when i first started playing the game and on and on and on i always ask questions i always try to get better every single day I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. If I felt like I left anything on the table, um, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. Right? So the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, that's where it comes from for me. You can't leave any stone unturned.